This is Dr. Hansen of World Ministries International. I want to welcome all of you that are watching right now to our service here in the chapel at World Ministries International. It's a live audience. And uh, those that are watching by television or listening on radio, shortwave, or watching and listening on social media, welcome. I've been doing a series on faith, and, and this is a continuation, my third message on it. And if you have not viewed or listened to the other messages, go to my website, www.worldministry.org, and you can watch and listen to the other messages. I want to speak on the apostles lived by faith. The apostles lived by faith. The Christian life starts and finishes with faith. Jesus is, quote, the author and finisher, unquote, of our faith and is called the apostle and high priest of our confession. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, there's a couple points here that we should take note. He's the author and finisher of our faith. You know, last night, I also talked a little bit where I spoke in Des Moines, Washington, that I am a debtor. I am a debtor of Jesus Christ. I am a debtor for what he did for me. And now that same mentality causes me, by faith, what I believe in the accomplished work of Christ to continue to share the good news or the gospel. Jesus was a debtor. He believed in it. He had a responsibility to God the Father, and he fulfilled that responsibility. How? By faith. By faith in believing God. The inspiration of the Word of God, documented in written form, is how we know and follow the will of God. So, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross. You know, they use the word joy. Would you, would you count it joy to go to the whipping stake and go to the cross? I'll tell you, most of you, I know, would not. Anything goes wrong and you fall apart. Would you be willing to be whipped with a cat of nine tails? 39 where your back is hamburger? Would you count it joy or complain? What would you count it? Would you count it joy to carry your cross and can't hardly do it and fall several times because you're so weak? Would you count it joy when they nailed it to the cross, nailed you to the cross? Would you count it joy? Jesus counted it joy. The apostles and prophets counted it joy to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, Peter said, I'm not worthy to die the same way. Nail me upside down. They counted it joy. You know, if a person says, well, that's them. Yeah, that should be you too, if your faith grows. We should be willing to do anything for Christ. Despising the shame, he endured the cross. Today, some people don't want to endure a little bit of criticism, so they keep their mouth shut. Just a little bit of criticism. We don't want to endure that. So let's just keep our mouths shut. Make everyone happy. Galatians 3, 2 through 3. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Again, Galatians 3, 2 through 3.
the Spirit. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Well, following just regulations without understanding the Spirit behind it, without knowing the author and finisher of our faith, without knowing the Holy Spirit, frankly, is impossible. But we're sure not going to be saved by following mental ascent and a set of rules and regulations. This has to be joy that we follow the ways of Christ. We do it willingly. Willingly. Luke 18, 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he finally find faith on the earth? He will avenge them. In other words, those that fight the will of God on earth, when he returns, he will avenge speedily. Wow, I don't want him to avenge me. I don't want him to avenge me at all. I want him to say, well done. So faith is the apostle's message. According to Paul, faith is a way of life. Not just something we do when we have the need. The just shall what? Live by faith. Romans 1, 17. Faith is the word of God. We live by the word of God, whether we feel like it or not. I don't feel like worshiping. Well, sit there and be depressed then. As you worship, you come out of your gloominess and depression. As you worship, it's an act of obedience. Or sit and pout. It's a choice. Teaching people how to live by faith is the main responsibility in apostolic ministry. If people don't know how to live by faith, they will not live a victorious Christian life. You know, somebody recently asked me, are you discouraged if not enough people take Bible courses in the Bible college? I said, well, you know, I cannot take a whip and force people. They should want to do it. They should long to do it. They should see it's a privilege to learn the word of God that they're more qualified and recognized so they can share their faith more. You can preach, but you can't make people live by the word of God. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can set food before a child, but you can't make him eat. People have a will. Are you discouraged? Sure, when they don't choose to want to know more of God. It's discouraging. Jesus is discouraged every day with the church. Are you there? Who are the church? You're the church. And I'll be very honest. Sometimes he's discouraged with you and me. Not yet the whole world. But by our choices, he's discouraged. By our attitude. 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith. I spoke last night. Didn't get home till 12.30 a.m. In other words, 30 minutes till 1 o'clock in the morning. I turn everything in to the ministry. I don't get a dime. Why am I doing it? Because of my faith in Jesus Christ. That's why I don't stay back and say, you know, I don't need to kill myself off. I don't get a dime more for it. Well, it's me to sit back like other people. Well, it's not in me to sit back. I have faith. I am a debtor. It's inside of me. I know it. And when my spirit leaves, I want God proud of me. Not saying, John, you live by your emotions. I don't want that. You live by your feelings. If you didn't feel like it, you didn't do it. You know, that's a person that's never victorious. And you've always got problems to deal with because you're not victorious. Because you are run by emotions instead of faith. The writer to the Hebrews points out that the major cause for failure to obtain all God has promised was a failure to apply faith to the promises of God. Do we believe the promises? Do we believe it? Do we really believe it? You know, the Bible talks so much about don't have a grudge, harbor bitterness against your brother, yet people have all sorts of diseases and they harbor bitterness against their brother. 
Do you have a clue? Do you have a mind? Do you understand you're not going to be healed with that mentality? Don't you get it? You think the word of God is just for there for, for you to choose what you want? You're not going to be healed. Until you forgive. And then God forgives you of your vanity and arrogance. Once again, passes mercy to you. Sometimes people choose what they want and ignore the rest and try to proclaim that there's this mighty, mighty Christian when God sees in front of, on top of their head, you know, mighty, mighty hypocrite. Not mighty, mighty Christian. Hebrews 4.2, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they have heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. In other words, we don't cherry pick. Okay, I'm going to accept this, but I don't want to accept this. It doesn't work that way. Well, I'm not going to accept the words of Christ because, you know, uh, I didn't like some of the ways Jesus Christ presented it. He, he called, you know, some people uh, uh, white -washed, washed sepulchers and hypocrites and liars. And well, I don't, I don't want to accept that. Do you understand why he did it? It doesn't matter if you like the messenger or not. You better accept the word. Because that very word will condemn you. Or heal you and prosper you. That very word. By a messenger of God that speaks according to the inspiration of God. And not just a prophet for hire. Oh, just to pamper you and let you get away with everything. That's not a true pastor from God. That has become nothing but a businessman behind the pulpit to get tithes and offerings, and you can come in your sins, and who cares? He's not going to confront you, and he'll say a good eulogy over you when you die. I like to emphasize what I call big Bible words in my teaching. In other words, a big Bible word is subject that God talks about a lot in the scriptures. So if God talks a lot about something, which he does faith, shouldn't we as well? If God talks a lot about sin, shouldn't we as well? If God talks about the promises of God, shouldn't we as well? Healing as well as unforgiveness as well as our prayers won't be answered. Shouldn't we talk about these big words? Should we just ignore it all and just live? Other big Bible words would be love, righteousness, hope, holiness, etc. We could say that the subject of faith may be the biggest Bible word because the scriptures itself is called the word of faith. Romans 10, 8, the word of faith. Paul tells us that hearing and understanding the word of God produces faith in our lives. Romans 10, 17, that's why I'm not for, I've, I've heard different people, I'll just, you know, my kid doesn't want to come to church or my teenager, so I'm going to leave him at home. That wasn't an option for me. I'm just telling you, my dad pastored eight churches and it wasn't an option when I lived under his house. Why? He had a razor strap. Oh, oh, he hit him. You bet he hit me right where it belongs. I have two places in my backside with a lot of cushion. And the Bible says to apply correction right there. And allow the correction to bring the brains from the bottom to the top. With a mighty swing of that razor strap or that. And he had a board on the wall called the Board of Education, filled with holes in it, just so you felt a little bit more of the love of God. Oh, I know, some people, oh, you can't hit your child. Well, you can, right on the seat of the problem. You can still do it. You're not supposed to beat him up all over the body, but there's a place to correct. You're not supposed to lose control and just beat him in your anger and but just, there's a proper place to correct a child. 
Paul tells us that hearing and understanding the word of God produces faith in our lives. Again, my dad made me come to church because it produces, I hear the word of God and it produces faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? Hearing the word of God. Not Pinocchio. Not hearing the words of Barney Fife and Andy Griffith. Hearing the word of God. That's how faith comes by. Not hearing the woke Seattle Seahawks go against everything moral and push a woke mentality. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Paul tells us that hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17, produces faith. We are who are in Christ or positional truths that produce victory and faith in the believer. Teachings, again, emphasizing who we are in Christ. Who are we? Or positional truths. Positional truths. If we forgive others, God will forgive us. This is a truth. If we fail to forgive others, God won't forgive us. This is a truth. If you come to the elders for prayer, let them search your heart. If there's sin, let them correct you. If you accept it, you'll be healed. If you don't, wallow in stubbornness, but you're not going to be healed. This is a positional truth. It produces victory. Many churches emphasize behavioral truth more than positional truth, which can result in legalism. Believers should come from beliefs and not the opposite. You know what? I happily serve the Lord because of the position I have inherited as a son of God. I happily serve Jesus. Faith is the apostle's method. Apostle Paul also taught how faith works, as Jesus did. Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, believe means adhere, rely, trust, and obey. That God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, we're not only professing, our actions are coming forth the same way that we profess. Believe, adhere, trust, and obey. We're adhering, we're trusting, we're obeying the word of God, not just stating it. In other words, I'm a Christian, but I won't forgive. That is not a Christian. That's not what this verse means. To believe in your heart, adhere, trust, rely, and obey. So you can say, I'm a Christian, but then do you forgive your brother? Mark eleven twenty three 23 through 24. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Faith works by believing, speaking, acting on the revealed word of God. We are saved by believing in our heart and speaking with our mouth, followed by actions that correspond with faith. Faith, Paul told us to continue the method of faith with our initial reception of Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't need that mountain moved then it's not going to be moved because we're not supposed to tempt God. It's like the devil, jump off this cliff and you'll be safe. That's tempting God. Now, if, if somebody pushes you off, God can certainly save you. But if you tempt God, you're not going to be saved. In other words, if I want to go in front of this road and, and tell everyone, watch me, and I walk in front of a semi, God's not going to save me, you're going to bury me. And maybe you even say, you know, pastor was really foolish that day because I tempted God. But if somebody pushes me, I've had a lot of things where I should be dead and I'm not dead. 
but I didn't do them purposely. Other people might have tried to kill me. God saved me. Is there a reason to move the mountain? I know a story where a person had to pray and the mountain actually was elevated. Incredible, but it had to happen. Yeah, three times. But don't tempt God. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Therefore have received Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Oh, hallelujah. James 2, 17. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accomplished by action, is dead. In other words, we not only confess, but we, we obey. We adhere to the word of God. You know, people in this room have left their way of life to serve. E.J. Buckhart, you know, I, I have given his testimony different times. He's not boasting about it. He's not that type of person, yet he's worked for me over 20 years free. Could live on his retirement. Uh, could just live the good life. But he understands what faith is. He wants an eternal reward. He wants an eternal reward. The same way I gave up my career, I want an eternal reward. I'm not living for myself on earth. I got back at 30 minutes to 1 o'clock in the morning, got up early, because I want an eternal reward. I want to, you know, I'm old enough, I could just retire. But again, retire for what? A lot of people retire and they die in a few years. They don't have a reason to live. And you just serve yourself, and that's not a reason to live. That's called selfishness. Acts 27, 21 through 25. Paul demonstrated how faith works in the midst of a deadly storm. But after long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought to Caesar. Indeed, God has granted you all these who sail with you. He'll protect them too. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. There will be no loss of life among you. I believe God that it will just be as it was told me. So Paul demonstrated how faith works. He told everybody. He didn't keep it in his heart. This is what the angel said to me. Hey, guys, don't worry. You're going to live. You know, it says, after a long abstinence of food. When we deny ourselves and, and fast, God reveals himself even more powerfully. Faith is the apostle's mantle. Some people... Faith is visible. It is seen in their word and actions. Jesus saw the faith of the individual who brought a man for healing, letting him down through the tiled roof, Luke 5.20. Apostles carry a mantle of faith. Paul called it the spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to that is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. We speak. That's why I speak. Words that people don't like to hear because of faith. Paul spoke words people didn't like to hear. Peter spoke them. All the apostles did. Spoke words people didn't want to hear. When we call it a mantle because it's imparted to others, who receives the messenger and the message? It's called a mantle imparted to others when you receive the word of God from the messenger. I like to say this. You must receive the man, the message, and the mantle. Elisha received Elijah as divinely anointed spokesman in his life. He received the man, but he also received Elijah's what he taught. So he received the message. Finally, we see that receiving the mantle, Elijah was taken up into a whirlwind to heaven. 
When he received the mantle, Elijah was taken up. I want somebody one day to receive my mantle and I can be taken up to heaven. One day, when God sees it's time, just like Elijah. Apostolic ministry will result in people receiving the mantle of faith. They will believe, speak, act on the word of God. The apostles' movement produced the greatest level of victory people ever witnessed. Faith is the apostles' message, method, and mantle. Let's watch right now and join Eagles Saving Nations. If we have good leadership, if we have righteous leadership, the people prosper. Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be aware of that. Eagles Saving Nations. Soon we're going to go and release this. Eagles Saving Nations. Unless you and I save our nation, we're going under. Again, I work with senators, attorneys, judges, members of Congress. Hallelujah, you have all authority. Church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, in Jesus' name, church arise, hallelujah.